Is it better to wait for one's intention to be 100% pure for the sake of Allah or to go ahead with the good deed despite knowing that intention isn't, isn't fully pure and to fight it in the process? No, no, you have to, you, you have to do everything you do in the state that you're in. Whatever good you do, you do and just fight yourself. You know, Imam Madik was asked about a man who sets out for the masjid with a good intention, but on the way he hopes somebody sees him on the way to the masjid. And he said, I hope he gets the first intention. Because it's just Iblis and Nafs, ego. Ego always wants a portion. You know, tell me how wonderful I am. Tell me how, you know, marvelous. I mean, that's just ego. And, and the ego always wants that. And so if you become at least aware of it and just... Uh, oppose it in yourself. You know, You know, whatever whispers occur in your heart that the heart denies, that's iman. Like the man who came to the Prophet ﷺ and told him he was having bad thoughts. He said, oh, you find that? He said, yeah. He said, sarih al-iman. That's pure faith, that you're rejecting the thoughts. And the best way to do that is just to not Don't fight it. Just let those things go. Don't get caught up in them. Because that's what Iblis wants. He wants you to, you know, I, and I learned this from Dr. Cleary, but I think it's a really useful uh, uh, way to understand this, is, is the host and the uninvited guest. And so the negative aspects of your personality are uninvited guests. And they will wreak havoc on the house. But the host has to... Uh, become more and more uh, healthy and more assertive until it takes control of the house again. And then when the guest comes in, like anger, it, because you need anger. I mean, this out here in this aqidah that they have out here, kindness is everything. You know, it's not everything. Anger is important. People should get angry when, when the anger is appropriate. We should be angry at what happens to the Palestinians you know, when, 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 when they're being mistreated like they are on their own land. That should make somebody angry. They should be upset about that. And, 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 and feeling that way is what enables people to act, to, to try to remove wrongs. If, if, if everybody was kind all the time, n there would be no wrongs removed from the world. So, and part of the role, we can't, we're not going to remove all the wrongs, and it's very dangerous to have people that think that they're going to get rid of all these things. But when you see a wrong, if you're able to, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ Whoever sees a munkar, let him change it. فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ Let him change it. بِيَدِهِ With his hand. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِيعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِيعْ at least do it with the heart. And that's the, word, the lowest of iman, to reject it with the heart. So, I mean, traditionally our ulama have made it clear that the yad is for the sultan, the tongue is for the scholar, and, and the heart is for the common person who sees a wrong. Because we can't, I, you can't go and just, you know, okay, so... It's a munkar, alcohol. You can't go and destroy the liquor store, even if it's in a Muslim country. You can't do it. You can't take the law into your own hands. That's the sultan is going to be responsible for that. Not you. And, and the same with the scholar. And sometimes the scholars, they might not speak up out of their ishtihad. So you, can't, you have to be careful also, you know, that scholar doesn't speak up. You don't know what, what their ishtihad is, and you don't know if they'll have a proof with their Lord. It's very, you know, because the scholars work on a whole other level that common people very often don't see. That's why there's khasa and amma. And one of the, the, the aspects of the modern time today is that everybody's a scholar. Everybody's a mushtahid. So it creates a lot of confusion in people because you know, Sheikh Google is there. You can look up anything. And then um, people think that uh, they know better. And you don't know why people do things. We have a history uh, of scholars that have been condemned in their lifetimes. And then later people realize they were the rightly guided ones. 
Ahmed Zarruq was kicked out of Fez for defending the Jews. I mean, the ulama kicked him out of Fez. But nobody remembers the ulama that kicked him out. Because he was actually the one that was right at the time. And they were big ulama. They weren't like, today, if one of them was alive today, he'd probably be one of the biggest ulama in the whole ummah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's good to be humble and just know your place.